this series is about the work of the male dancer, the work created for him by the choreographer. Much of our work is creating new ballets together with a choreographer of the present day. The rest of it is recreating the work of the great choreographers of the past. First I want to pay tribute to the choreographer who first influenced me, the Danish choreographer August Bonneville. This is a company of the Royal Danish Ballet with Frank Anderson and Liz Jeppesen in their version of Bonneville's ballet La Ventana. Of course, I soon learned there were other choreographers, but I still returned to him, not only because he wrote my own ballet language, but because he's continually challenging. Above all, you have to make dance as very difficult indeed look wonderfully easy. We have to make them live for today's audiences, and it is as difficult to preserve their spirit as their choreography. These ballets can only live if they don't become museum pieces. The characters may be unreal or old-fashioned, but the themes are timeless and universal. It is our job to put this across. We must believe in the characters ourselves, and make the audiences believe in them too. The relationship between a choreographer and the dancer he is creating for is like the relationship between the sculptor and the clay he uses to model. The choreographer shapes the ideas he has for movement on the body in front of him. He makes it do what he wants within the limitation, of course, of the dancer's physique and sometimes beyond. Now, you're going to in this program, I want to show you some of the most interesting choreographers today at work. Without them, we would have nothing to do other than recreate old works. Like the choreographers of the past, their work comes out of the times we live in. And as they've all been dancers, they're very aware of the technical standards they can demand from the male dancer today. It's it's maximum a pour mont, maximum a pour mont around. For somebody like myself, being trained totally in the classical Bonneville style, to work with one of our contemporary dance choreographers is like a painter educated to work in classical painting, being asked to do a modern painting. You have to re-educate your whole body. Can I get that arm, please? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, it, it's good just sort of halfway round. So you want I'll, to I'll stop. Down. I'll stop you when I want to see the position I want. Okay. Yeah. Kenneth Macmillan is one of the most demanding of modern choreographers. He has been one of the most adventurous in creating roles for men that break with convention. Yeah. Sorry, put that leg on the floor, Alex. 
I want you to be like that, that way. Sorry. And I put my leg on the floor. These are early rehearsals for a new ballet, Orpheus, which Macmillan created to the music of Stravinsky. At this rehearsal, Alessandro Ferry is dancing Eurydice. Leg more there. No, Macmillan welcomes a change his scene in the image of the male dancer. I think because dancing is always thought of as graceful, which is an attribute you apply to females. Um, and nobody thought there was any other kind of quality that could be applied um, until the muscularity and the vigor of someone like Nirev came along, really. And it wasn't only graceful. I mean, it had a sort of brute force about it, which was very beautiful, too. And I use very complicated holds and very high lifts, and you need to be very strong to do that. That's it, yeah. You're still having trouble with that, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the hip bone goes in here, and it, so it sticks uh, in my ribs. I think the fundamental thing about relationships between men and women is always sexual. I mean, whether it be overt or hidden. I mean, I think but it has to be some kind of sexual tension between the man and the woman. Yeah. Oh, I wrong, know wrong, wrong, wrong. At this rehearsal, Jennifer Penny is Eurydice. Stephen Jeffries is learning the role of Orpheus too, as recreated. <laughs> it's very exciting working with someone who pushes you to the absolute maximum of what you can do. But it's also a very painful experience. You can see this is going to take hours. During the period I was working with Kenneth Macmillan, I woke up a very tired see man now. in the morning, aching all over from muscles that I had not used before. I've got, I've got a Peter. You've got some hurt there. But I don't know what, who's holding what? I'm holding something. Holding I'm, a I'm holding on for dear life. No. <laughs> And I know you're there, you're running my shoulder. Now, Peter, <laughs> you're going to come this way, but as you're going to dip, no, 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 you're going to walk round, Peter. You're, and you're going to go, oh, yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yes. Yes, yes lovely. Yes. But I was helping an awful lot at the beginning there, so I don't oh. know how you... I should... okay. And I know you're there. I bet you're you. You're right. Yes. <laughs> <gasps> yeah. to go there and she's too low. Too low. And you hang down somewhere. I bring up a little bit more. Bring up a bit more. That's it. Not more on the shoulder. Though. More on the shoulder. Yeah. Then right on. Can I do one of these? It would be very helpful if you could. Oh yeah, it looks lovely, but oh, oh. Yeah. may I have a stance? <laughs> has died and is taken down to hell. Orpheus has followed her there. He's been blindfolded and been told that if he looks upon his wife, she will disappear forever. <laughs>